Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I recently fixed a washing machine, a Hotpoint WMA50. It had a broken relay on the circuit board, the control board. And if this would focus, this is one of the relays. The other one's identical looking. It's actuated by 12 volts. It's uh, this number here. And it'll pass 240 volts AC either 10 amps or 6 amps, I'm not sure if that's a max and a constant or something like that. I don't know, normally open, it'll take 10 amps, and normally closed, it'll take 6 amps. So it'll take 6 amps all the time, and then 10 amps when it switches over, if that makes sense. So looking on the back of it here, you've got 5 terminals. Normally, it's in the closed position, so this one is joined to this one, and they're normally closed. But then, whenever 12 volt is applied from here, to here, the switch jumps and goes for like th from this to this. So let's uh, let's test them and see which one's gone. Uh, there's two of them here, and I've got some other ones that were spares left over from the replacement job. So let's put some electricity. This is a 12 volt battery, and if it works, you probably just hear it. But and before I do that, let's check for continuity. I've got it set up to re read resistance, which will tell me continuity. And from the closed position, yeah, you can see that the, the number doesn't matter, but it's just that the, the number changes from one to something else there. So that there's continuity there, and there, there isn't continuity there. So the, the switch is in this position here, and when I put 12 volts across it, it should switch over like this. So keep your ears open for a clunking noise. I heard something, it might have been my alligator clip. So let's check again from here. This is quite difficult to hold. Yeah, so that sounds about, looks about right. So the switch has gone over to this position. And you can hear it working. So let's try the other one. Let's just check it first to see what position it's in. Yeah, it's it's uh, closed in this position. So let's put 12 volts across it. Let's try it again. So it's not working. So this one's the dud. I think I'm going to cut both of them open and see if I can see it working inside and see what switches inside and try it again with it working. And these are just two other ones, different different brand, but exactly the same layout and 10 amp again at 125 volts, so that's different, a different arrangement, but these ones seem to work fine in the machine for, for what it's doing. Yeah, I said something there about six volts and ten or ten amps and six amps. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's if it's ten amps that it can resist when it's open, or if it's ten amps that it uh, that it can pass when it's closed across. I don't know. So let's get into them, cut it open, and see what's in there. So then I've managed not to pay attention to which one was which, but I cut all the way around with the hacksaw very gently. So that, well, I went in far enough to touch the copper there, but not a big deal. Let's see about getting this off. There's one cover. Let's see what we can see here. So we've got a big coil, which pushes up, I would say, or down. Imagine it pulls down then, and pulls that contact there across. So... Yeah, it's normally in this, so that was looking at it from below. So this one here is normally attached to this, which is attached to the center tap here. And then when the solenoid pulls, it goes like that. And that's the clunking that you hear. Joining this one at the back in the center to this one in the front on the right. Okay, let's have a look at the other one. I presume it's identical because they're identical on the outside. There's a lot going on. Like in, in this, for electronics, this isn't a lot really. There, there's a lot of little bits going on in here, a lot of copper, copper coils, copper spools, solenoid. Again, must pull it down, so let's, 
Let's see how we can get a, get a shot of this now. Probably don't need to use, I know one of them works, so if I get this on here, hold that like that. I don't know which one it is, so. Oh yeah, it is this one, okay. And that's it, we don't need a continuity tester to tell us that's the one that's working. So, let's just put the other one up for fun, see if we can wonder what's going wrong with it. Rusty old alligator clips on here, there's one, and the other one. There's just nothing happening there, so there must be no continuity through that coil. Actually, that's something I can check. <clears throat> So just checking across the coil, we're getting nothing there on the good one, that's now a dead one. Yeah, so we're getting a resistance reading across the coil and on the dud one we aren't. And that's a sign that the coil has burnt out, and so that red coil of copper wire is dead and that's just the way it is. Remove it by hand if you wanted to, but uh, that's not really something you'd do in practice. There's a lot of copper in there, you know, for the miniature size of it, and it being, you know, the size of my fingertip. There's a lot of copper in there, there's a bit of steel in there. There's uh, chromed, not chromed, I don't know what they'd be, plated copper ends, plastic sides. There's that little wire running from one side. Oh, look, and it's missing from this side, so let's compare. I know it's not, it's, uh, I, thought it, I thought it might be missing, but it's rooted in somewhere other, some other way. Maybe underneath that piece of little flap of plastic there. Yeah, it looks like it's in there. So I don't know, at some point in the coil it'll be it'll be broken. And so it doesn't work. And that's that. For all parts, all electronic components, and this is going back to what I was saying before about these numbers on here. For all electronic components, there's a data sheet. And typically if you go onto a website that sells electronic components where they sell them, there will be a link to the data sheet for the code. If you type in the code in Google, then typically you'll get a link to a generic data sheet website that tries to, sometimes they work and sometimes they try and sell you advertising. But if you go to a component website that sells the components and check from there, they will tell you all the details. And a data sheet tells you pretty much everything you want to know um, about the component in question. And this is a really simple component. You put 12 volts on it and it handles switching operation but for other things that have you know loads of controls going on and different kinds of switching or different kinds of you know even a simple resistor or a series of resistors will have a data sheet so they're worth looking up and they you know they'll help you to understand what's going on inside and they'll have diagrams of the the shape that you need to fit onto a circuit board and everything else but uh that's my little investigation into what went wrong with this machine it doesn't tell me what went wrong but we from the People who commented and watched my other videos, whenever this machine originally went into service and did a wash, something happened where the, the suppressor, the uh, noise suppressor, blew. And that must have sent a like a shock wave or some kind of a, a, a high, high current through the circuit board and it hit one of these two little solenoids or little relays. Well, it hit the solenoid but broke the relay then in that case. So, there you go. I find this quite interesting. I've never been into one before, save to see one uh, perhaps that had been crushed and then you don't really see the operation. Oh, there it is again. It's a tiny switch. And those are probably silver contacts as well. The tips of those little contacts are probably silver. So if you were doing recycling, you know, there's a lot of parts in here, but they're so tiny that whether or not it's worth recovering them is a different question. Right. Maybe you learned something.
You can help the channel out by checking in the description below. I'll post a link to Amazon, and if there's something you need, you can buy it through Amazon, anything at all, and a small proportion of that maybe will go to the channel. Depends on what you buy. Uh, but I'll certainly put a link into multimeters because uh, even a cheap generic one like this is a really handy thing to have. I um, might put a link to a relay or something like that there, but genuinely uh, there's a link to my shop and if you go in through the shop, anything you buy will uh, support this channel. That'd be excellent. Leave a comment below if, you, if I've got something wrong there, but that's as much as I know about the topic. Um, thanks for watching. See you later.